and today's video is all about my first time developing colored film. I started getting into film photography uh, sometime last year and it's not like a hobby that I really took seriously. I was just like, I got a film camera, I started taking photos. It wasn't my first time trying out film photography. I used to, you know, have fun with it too, like back like five years ago. But, you know, nothing really came out of that. But this year, I've decided to take my hobby a little bit more seriously. By seriously, I mean shooting more and developing my own film. So I have two reasons why I wanted to learn how to develop my own film. One, because I just wanted to learn how to do it myself. I've always been curious and I heard it's a pretty fun process. And two, I live in New York City where developing film can get really, really pricey. Like one roll of film, if I get this developed outside somewhere in a lab, it can cost about $11 starting price. And then if you want your negatives, it's another few dollars. If you want it scanned, it's another few dollars. So sometimes it can reach to about $20 depending on what you want from your film. So yeah, it's just not economical and so I decided to just finally learn how to do it myself. There's actually a lot of resources on YouTube. So that is how I learned initially. So before I started to develop my own film, I did a lot of research and watched a lot of YouTube videos. I'm gonna link everything down below so that you guys can see what resources I've used. So to give you guys an idea of what kind of materials you're gonna be needing to develop your own film, I have a list here. So the stuff that I bought to develop my own film is one, a dark room bag. You're gonna need a dark room bag because if you don't have a dark room, I don't know, it's just so much easier to have a dark room bag where you can just slip your hands in and do the entire uh, film loading process. A Patterson tank, which is where all the chemicals come in for the developing. Um, a film canister opener. It looks like a typical bottle opener, but it's not. Um, you need that. Scissors to cut the film. Um, a C41 developing kit. Amber glass bottles for the chemicals. A thermometer, preferably an electric one. A funnel. Uh, a film squeegee to get rid of the excess water when you've hung up your film. Last but not the least, a test roll. When I decided that I was gonna develop my own film, I didn't want to use a really good roll of film. So I shot a roll of film in different lighting conditions. I didn't really think too much of it. It was literally just a test roll so that if I screw it up, I wouldn't feel so bad. I did screw it up. The first test roll, I did. I screwed it up. Um, I made a mistake, but we will. I'll get into that later on after I show you guys the entire process and how I developed my own film. Now that I'm done mixing all my chemicals and stuff, I'm gonna actually start putting the film into this film roll thing. I don't know what it's called. Um, I have a darkroom bag, so that I don't have to actually do it in like, like my bathroom and stuff. This way I think it's easier because I have my iPad with me where I can basically just read through the instructions in case I forget anything. So this is the setup of how I'm gonna have the stuff inside the bag. I just have the, the tank here and this tube goes in this way. 
and then I have to put it in later on when I have the film. This is the film opener. Once it's inside, I will have to open it. I'm guessing like that. I really don't know. And then I will have to cut the film. I'm gonna put it in and then <laughs> I'm gonna put it in. This is actually the scariest part for me because the chemicals and stuff, I feel like that's easy. It's like chemistry, you know what I mean? Just follow instructions. But with this, it's very sensitive and I don't wanna ruin the film. Although granted, the film that I'm using is just a test film, so it's not that valuable to me. All right, so I'm just gonna zip this up. Put my hand in. Okay, I think that's pretty safe like no lights coming in let me just feel around for the stuff okay so this is the film opener scissors the tank and the filmy roll thingy okay so i'm gonna go for it <laughs> what am i doing i can't find it okay there i think i got it i'm gonna open it now nope that's not opening oh my god what is this okay Wow, that's hard to open. It's not opening. It's supposed to just pop off, like the top, like how you open a bottle. <sighs> Let's try this one more time. I really don't know how the hell he did that. <gasps> there, I got it. I got it, okay. So that's out, where are my scissors? You know what sucks about this? My hand is sweating inside, and I don't think that's good for the film. <laughs> Taking out the film. Wow. You gotta be careful with that because it's gonna start unrolling. Now it's time to put the film in. I'm just wondering what's happening. Um, I'm putting it in the thingy. It came off. <laughs> it came off. Wait, it didn't catch. This is so difficult, but fun because it's a challenge and I like challenges. Okay, let's try that one more time. Please don't come off anymore. I'm like at the point of no return too because like I can't take my hands out or else it's going to um, expose the film. Hi, where are you? Okay, inserting the film. I'm trying to visualize it. Okay, so it's in. Can you like stay in? Thank you. I think it's happening. It's happening! Okay, now I'm going to put the tubey thing into the kind of the thing. And then I'm gonna put it in the, whatever you call this, the tank. I bet this is like boring for people to watch. They're like, I, we can't even see. And after this, put the chemicals in. We're halfway done. So that's what it looks like when I opened it with the thingy. This was actually hard to open because it's metal. You really need to put some muscle into it. So it's in here. And from this point on, because it's sealed, I can open it now to put in the chemicals and stuff. So, yep, let's get to developing. Start the clock for one minute. 102. Perfect. Goes in. Moment of truth. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna be so sad. <gasps> I see something. It worked! Look. Hey, that's the, one of the last shots we took. Oh shit. Was I supposed to pull it another way? <laughs> there we go. Oh my gosh, the ramen! Wait, I think I gotta do this in the bathroom. Just like... <laughs> oh. 
Okay, so where I screwed up was I actually left the developer completely too long. Like, way too long than I should have. I made a mistake because I don't remember the source or the blog that I was reading that was helping me guide through the developing process. But basically, from what I understood, I was supposed to leave the developer for six minutes, which was like, too long. You're only supposed to leave it for about three minutes. Anything longer than that, they call it like pushing, which is like slowly overdeveloping the film, depending on, I guess, what you need in your film. Like a minute longer, you're like developing the film at an exposure level of one more level up. Two minutes longer, it's two levels up. So you're film is getting lighter and lighter and lighter the longer you leave the developer on. If I'm wrong, if someone's watching this and you are like a film expert, please correct me in the comments, but that is what I understand. And so what happened was when I developed my first role, I left it on for too long and a lot of my shots actually came out really overexposed. Some of them though like came out fine, so that's good. I definitely screwed up my test role. However, with my second role, I found a better guide and like a timetable that I followed and that one actually worked perfectly. So I'm gonna link that one down below as well. Since the first time I developed my first roll of colored film, I have developed about 10 films in total. Went on a Euro trip, took a lot of film photos there, and I came home, developed them myself. All of them turned out really great. Some final thoughts about developing your own film. I definitely recommend it. It is worth learning how to do it yourself. It's a really fun process, and I find that the whole process kind of like, I guess it's kind of like I zone out in a way. Like, I put on, put on my headphones, I, you know, go through the process. I more or less kind of memorize it now, but I still have the guide all the time just in case. A lot of you guys on Instagram have reached out um, with your concerns. The number one concern about developing with colored film is the temperature and timing process. I find that there's a lot of leeway when it comes to the temperatures, so like the most meticulous one is just the developer. The developer has to be about 102 Fahrenheit, plus or minus 4 degrees, I think. 102 Fahrenheit, sorry, I'm, I'm like... I'm a Celsius, Celsius girl, but because I'm in the US and the guide that I use uses Fahrenheit, I got used to Fahrenheit. And so that is about 38 degrees Celsius. If you have your, your digital thermometer, it's gonna be really easy to keep track of that. But I've noticed that in the other rolls of film that I develop without following the 102 degrees Fahrenheit uh, rule, I find that it's the same. I don't necessarily go way beyond or way below 102. So sometimes it's gonna be 101, sometimes is gonna be 103. Generally, it's fine around that temperature level. And as for the timing as well, if you're like a few seconds over or a few seconds too short, it's fine. Like, it's not a big deal. I think you'll find that it's not that strict. Like, if it says you have to pour the chemicals back, like stop the developer at like three minutes and like 10 seconds, you don't have to do it right at that second. Like if you did it five seconds later, it's fine. If you do it five seconds before, it's fine as well. Also, I wanted to um, just tackle this one because in some guides that I've seen online or like some tutorials, the process goes like, so the first step that you do, you do like a wash. So you put in some water, let it sit, agitate uh, the Patterson tank a little bit, pour it out after a minute and then you start your developer. So after the developer, I go straight to using the Blix, the bleach and the fixer. It's like two in one. Some kits, I think, have a separate bleach and a separate fixer. The one I have has the bleach and the fixer together, and it's called Blix. And um, so I do that for about six minutes, I would say. And then after I do the Blix, I do another water wash for the tank, and then I wash it to get rid of the Blix residue. And then after that, I go for stabilizer. But after stabilizer, I don't wash my film anymore. Because some guides or some tutorials will tell you to wash after the stabilizer, but it's recommended not to because the stabilizer helps your film stabilize and last longer. And if you wash that out of your film, your film won't last as long. So yeah, I'm gonna end this video with a little slideshow of the photos that I've taken and developed myself. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys learned a thing or two and I hope that this video has given you the courage to try developing film yourself. It's really, really not that difficult. It's actually one of my favorite things to do in the process of film photography. Like, it's really fun. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video.
Thank you.